The 2021 NFL Draft will be defined by its quarterbacks. It features a prospect who's considered the best we've seen in a decade, as well as several potential game changers who have left teams jockeying for position at the top of the draft board. I spoke with Mark Sanchez to get a feel for the top five quarterbacks in the class of 2021. Justin Fields, 6'3", 227 pounds out of Ohio State, 22 touchdowns, six INTs this past season. He can be very accurate with the football. He also can run. How does that translate to today's NFL offense? You know what I think about Justin Fields? Think about a sheet of music. Every singer that's, you know, a professional is going to hit the notes, but you get a Whitney Houston, and they take those same notes, and they add a little something to it. They have something special that nobody else has. That's where I see Justin Fields, because he's right on the precipice of blowing this thing wide open, in my opinion. And I think he's getting knocked unfairly for a shortened season, a ton of chaos leading up to their season. And we're talking a handful of plays. And those five plays are suddenly making him a poor processor, a guy who can't go through his reads. And I think it's a load of crap, to be totally honest. I think this kid is destined for greatness and might be one of the best in this class, if not the best, when it's all said and done, simply because of how quickly he learns from his mistakes. He doesn't repeat a ton of them. As long as he gets with the coordinator who can put him in the right positions, I think the sky's the limit for this guy because he runs with the best of them. He has the ability to get you out of trouble with his legs. He can process just fine that athletic intelligence quotient test, he was off the charts, better than any quarterback in the class. So any of this notion that he can't do it is, is crazy to me. Mac Jones, 6'3", 214 pounds. The Alabama quarterback was the backup to Jalen Hurts, the backup to Tua Tungabailoa. Had to beat out a young freshman phenom out of high school to get this job last season. And then what does he do? 41 touchdowns, four interceptions. He has so many weapons. When people talk specifically about his skill set, they don't say that he's very athletic. So help me understand, why are so many people so high on what Mac Jones can do on this level on Sundays? The more you watch him, the more you like him. Because at first you think, okay, he's unathletic. Well, he's also being paired against some of the most athletic quarterbacks that have ever come out in the draft. But nobody complains about Matt Ryan, Matt Stafford, Drew Brees, and their athleticism. This kid grew up playing tennis, and you can tell he's got quick feet. He's not as comfortable throwing off platform, but he gets to his platform so quickly, so he gets himself in the position to deliver an accurate ball. And that's one of the most important things is, if you're getting somebody like this that can't just take off and run after going through one read, he has to process through the whole thing. And then the other thing is he's gotta be deadly accurate. Because if you don't throw in those splash plays that you extend and go big down the field, you gotta be accurate enough to get these guys an opportunity to keep running and get yards after the catch. He's one of the best at that. He also handles a lot of shifts, a lot of motions, a lot of pre-snap keys and reads that make him desirable to a lot of these offensive systems, especially a West Coast system. And this kid has essentially perfected this position at a college level. And I think he's plenty good enough of an athlete to make this work. He's gonna be one of the best play action passers of this class, no doubt. Trevor Lawrence, 6'6", 220 pounds. There's no chip on his shoulder because he didn't have to. Uh, no one's <laughs> doubted him and the belief that he would be the number one overall pick. When you watch him, what makes this kid a can't-miss prospect? He's been this prospect that, that has been anointed for three years now, and no fault of his own, but he came in and played really well. He's won a national championship. He's been on one of the best teams in college football. And mechanically, he just looks the part. He's got the arm strength, he's got the talent, he's got plenty of mobility, uh, been more or less injury free other than this recent shoulder thing, but it doesn't seem to be a major factor. I think the most important thing is he's just the total package, right? He's won a ton of games. He's got a ton of experience under his belt. My only question with Trevor is he's never really had to like bring his team back, right? He's never had to handle that two minute drill to go win a game down 14 points in the fourth quarter. So those are the things that he's gonna have to really fine tune. And this whole process, let's be real, is about trying to find a knock on, on all these players, right? Trying to find something wrong with their armor, finding their one fault. So that would be the only thing. Other than that, he's the total package. You pair him up with Urban Meyer, who's you know obsessive about winning and has the track record to speak for itself. I think that's why it's pretty much a can't miss. The wild card of the quarterback, Trey Lance, 
I understand he missed most of last season, played only one game. But when you go back to 2019, the numbers are ridiculous. 28 touchdowns in the air, 14 on the ground, no interceptions. And it's great to have you in this conversation because you came in with less than 17 games on your resume in college and then jumped to the NFL. How will that play a role here for him? Well, I think it's important, uh, and you nailed it. He is the wild card of all wild cards. In my position, playing 16 games, going 14 and two, the difference was I was in a I was in a system with Sark, under center, um, you know, ton of play action pass, plenty of quick game, plenty of drop back pass against some of the best teams in the country in a conference that was still pretty solid. So that's that's what you have to weigh. But there's plenty of guys that come from small schools. Look at Josh Allen. Uh, look at Carson Wentz. I mean, there's plenty of guys that have made it from his position and that level of competition. But he would highly benefit from going somewhere with an established starter because it is a big jump. I, it was a big jump for me. And I was maybe in one of the best positions to succeed to get to that next level because of the system we are running. I think coming from that level of competition and essentially taking a year off of football to jump right into the NFL with no offseason doesn't serve anyone very well, especially him, but he has all the talent in the world. This kid could be pretty special in the near future. Zach Wilson's out of BYU, and uh, a lot of people talk about him not playing against uh, better competition that we've seen with some of these other quarterbacks. He throws the ball on a variety of platforms. What exactly does that mean as a quarterback? Yeah, so basically when you're off base, when your feet aren't perfectly planted in the ground, now everybody's rewriting the script and rewriting the book, really, because of guys like Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. These sidearm, you know, one-footed throws. I mean, he's all over the place. Off his back foot, it looks like he's shooting fadeaway three-pointers like Steph Curry. So this is what Zach Wilson does best because there's always been a lot of chaos in the pocket. So he just happens to thrive in that chaos. That's the most exciting thing about watching him. The 2019 tape, not his cleanest, not his best. He makes a couple throws where you're like, eh, I don't love that decision. I don't love that read. You made it a little harder than you had to. In 2020, he really cleaned that up. Um, but like I said, there's splash plays all over the tape. Whenever that ball snapped, you might not know where that thing's going, but it sure could be amazing. It sure could be electrifying and it sure could be a big play. It feels like you're describing Baker Mayfield, a little Johnny Manziel. Yeah, I think some sort of hybrid of those guys. Um, but I think uh, somebody somebody more like even Brett Favre-ish, mm, where no, yeah. you know, when he started ripping those RPOs, Brett Favre would turn his back to the defense and spit a ball out with almost not even looking, right? Now it's at a shotgun. And Zach Wilson's so damn good at this, he does it like he's um, a baseball player with really quick hands and he's turning two, but he does it off of his back foot, one foot, no look type stuff. This ball's gonna come out from different angles and different positions, but he's usually right. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.